Hi everyone, in today's lesson we're going to continue trig equations. This time we're going to do trig equations that involve factoring. So as always, I have the unit circle here and the exact value chart just in case we need it. Um, so let's just take a look at example number one. Again, it says solve for all values of theta that satisfy the equation below over the interval from zero to 360, rounding all answers to the nearest tenth if necessary. So because we have the same trig function, tangent and tangent, we can do what we did in the other example. We can let x equal tan of theta. Solve the equation with x's and then put the tangent back in. So we have 3x squared minus 2x equals 0. Now, the way that we solve these equations, anytime we have a degree of 2 or higher, uh, we're going to factor. So here we can take out a GCF of x and follow the division, each piece divided by x, we would get 3x minus 2. And we do a t-chart. Here, x is equal to 0. And here, 3x minus 2 equals 0. And a quick solve will get me to 3x equals 2, divide by 3, and x equals 2 thirds. So now that these are my x values, I have to put what I let x equal back in. So x is equal to tan of theta. So here um, we have tangent of theta equals 0. And here we have tangent of theta equals 2 thirds. So I'm actually going to do the work over here to find the thetas. So I'm just going to rewrite them. I have tan of theta is 0, and I have tan of theta is 2 thirds. So to find the angle, you can do second tan of 0 degrees. You can put that in the calculator and get a value. Now, if you do that, the calculator should give you 0 degrees. But the calculator can't give all of the values. Um, because it's not capable of spitting out more than one answer. So you have to remember that if you get 0 or 1, you have to look at the unit circle. And we know that in order to find tangent, so tangent of theta, we take the y value and divide the x value. And in order to get 0 out of that, 0 needs to be on top. 0 divided by anything, whether it's 1 or negative 1, will give me 0, right? 0 divided by 1 or 0 divided by negative 1 will give me 0. So we're looking for the angle where the y value is 0. So wherever the y value is 0 is where this is going to work out. That happens to be here and here. So it's 0 degrees, 360 degrees, and 180 degrees. So technically, in this problem, there are three values that work for theta. So 0, 180 and 360. So the downfall of using the calculator is that the calculator is not able to give us more than one answer at a time. So that's why it's important to make sure we know that this unit circle. Okay, let's take a look at the second part now. Tangent of theta is equal to a positive two-thirds. So remember, the positive tells us placement. It tells us where we are. All students take calc. So tangent is positive in quadrant one and in quadrant three. So we need the two answers to get us there. So we know that two thirds is not on the unit circle, right? It's not zero, one, or negative one. And two thirds is not on the exact value chart. So we know we're gonna have to use the calculator for this. So to find theta, we hit second tan or tan negative one of two thirds. Now take a minute, put that into the calculator, and then hit resume when you're ready for the answer. Please make sure your calculator is in degree mode, otherwise you'll get the wrong answer. Okay, so rounding this to the nearest tenth, I get approximately 33.7 degrees. Now we know ang the reference angle will always be a quadrant one angle, right? This is my reference angle. And we have an angle in quadrant one, that's what we need. So we can go ahead and say quadrant one, is simply 33.7 degrees, and that's one answer. And how do we find the angle in quadrant three? If you remember from yesterday, that is simply taking 180 and adding the reference angle.
So take a minute, add the two, and you should get 213.7 degrees. So the answer to this problem actually has five answers. It's one, two, three, four, and five. All right, let's take a look at the next problem on the back. So notice here that there's only one trig function, and notice here that it's the same trig function. So we can use x for cosecant, and here we can use x to be cosine. So actually, I think what I'm going to do with both of these is I'm going to set you up to solve them, and then I want you to finish them for homework, and we'll compare our answers when we come to class tomorrow. So since in this first one that x is cosecant, we're just going to make this x squared minus 4 equals 0. And you should know that this is a dots factoring. So this is x plus 2, x minus 2. And when we do a t-chart, we get x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2. So when we put our cosecant back in, it's now cosecant of theta equals negative 2. And here is cosecant of theta equals 2. Now remember, with reciprocal functions, you can't use the second button on the calculator until you change it back to the original sine, cos, or tan. So this one we need to change back to sine, since sine is the reciprocal of cosecant. And the reciprocal of negative 2 over 1 is simply negative 1 over 2. Same thing over here, the reciprocal of 2 over 1 is 1 half. So what I'd like you to do now for homework is finish this and get me the answers that make sense. Okay, now let's move on to number three. We're going to, since we let x be cosine of theta, we're just going to say this is x squared equals negative 11x minus 30. And since this is a quadratic with an x squared, we need to move everything over to the x squared side so that we can factor. So we've got x squared plus 11x and then plus 30. Now we notice this is a trinomial with a leading coefficient of 1, so we can use am. What numbers add to 11 that multiply to 30? Well, that pair is 6 and 5. 6 times 5 is 30, and 6 plus 5 is 11. And we'll do a nice t-chart. x equals negative 6 and x equals negative 5. Again, since we let x equal cosine of theta, we're going to put that back in. So cosine of theta equals negative 6. Cosine of theta equals negative 5. So what you're going to do now is try to find the values. Oops, sorry. Try to find the values that make sense here and here. And that's how we'll start class tomorrow. But please make sure when you're finalizing your answers, you use the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So that means you're putting your final answer in radians. All right, that's it for today. Um, if you have any questions about anything, now's a good time to jot them down and make sure you ask me in class tomorrow. All right, have a good night.